organized here. Let's see if, how this sounds. How do we sound? Turn it on. Just switch. How do we sound? We sound all right. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Okay, this is a Prezi presentation. It's public. It's online. So I posted it on my Facebook page. I put it on my blog. If you go to Prezi.com and look, there's a bunch of links. This sounds so loud. When you're standing up here, it's Don Harvey was like, Don, Don. it's like reverberating. <laughs> okay, um, this is this kind of crazy system. If people have seen Prezi before, I want to promise you that I did it so that it's not going to make you car sick. All right, so it's online presentation. It's about the art of tracking. I'm going to talk about the work that's in this show, but I'm going to step back and sort of tell a story about how I got here. And I'm going to sort of explain about sleep and self-tracking and this whole idea of experimenting. And one of my secret goals is that I'm going to get everybody here to really think about measuring something. You might already be measuring, but you might not write it down at the beginning, but it's this idea that you're going to start paying attention to something about yourself. So that's my not-so-secret <laughs> goal for you guys. All right, here we go. So quantify me, it's this idea of self-tracking and the idea that you can you know, watch and pay attention to yourself. And as I got here, I've always had this idea that brain rhythm and visual rhythm were connected. That there's something about how the mind sees pattern and it's connected to some innate pattern within yourself. And so I've always really been interested in pattern and I've looked and read a lot about neuroscience and I've thought about pattern and the pattern of yourselves and I've made works that are about the, all the little pieces of memory and what do you recall or what do you see in a day. And so I'm sort of paging through here at the beginning some of my pieces and some of my works. These are six foot collage pieces. You know, I've worked on pieces that are relative to time, and time tracking. And this little piece is around the corner here. I've looked at populations of ALS patients. I did a piece based on their actual medical uh, prognosis and their medical history with the Carolinas Healthcare at a residency just about a year ago. And I've done pieces. This is a little piece that's right out of the front. It's about sleep and it's about the stages of sleep. And I've done a lot of work um, that's connected to measuring sleep. And, so, and a number of people have come to me and asked, you know, what got you started measuring sleep? I actually wear a little headband, and I got Rachel to wear one, and I think Lisa <laughs> took one home one night, and I think I, you know, I've tried to talk to a number of people. It's a little EEG, so it's actually measuring your brain waves. Um, you know, it's a little, you know, if it's 80s, it's sort of, you know, a little jazzercise. It's a little... <laughs> But it's actually measuring the delta waves, it's measuring your sleep very accurately, the different stages of sleep. And uh, I talked my husband into measuring sleep so he doesn't think I'm too geeky looking. <laughs> and the thing that got me started with the idea of sleep is I was making pieces that I always had thought, you know, the perfect painting feels like a 24 hour day, right? There's these big quiet areas of when you're sleeping. And then there's the sort of the intense moment of when you're having an argument. Or there's the perfect, you know, ice cream sundae. You know, it's sort of that combination of the way a day feels is what makes a perfect painting. You know, it's big, right? And I always had thought that all these little pieces were relative to time. And so I thought, well, how can I actually keep track of, you know, a real, you know, how does a, how does a day really break down? And I found, I started trying it, and it's, oh, it's incredibly hard. So I actually found... Ben Lipkowitz, who, it's phonetic.net, I'm not going to click on his link, but he keeps track of his time. Every horizontal band across the top is 24 hours. And so if you actually go to his site and look, he's been keeping track of his time uh, for the last seven years. And Ben is a scientist, his parents are neuroscientists, he's a smart guy. He, um, 
I've met him after I'd been making work after about a year, and I was a little afraid to meet him. And um, he, he was the sweetest, nicest, most. I mean, he wasn't a crazy compulsive. He has this idea that in the future that people could recreate the experience of who he was and have a conversation and go back if only there was enough data about what he was doing. So um, the colors all mean things. Red is um, time online, uh, green is eating, blue is sleeping, yellow is chatting. So I, you know, took a look and, and that was the point where I started measuring my sleep and I was fascinated that sleeping and waking were really not so different. You know, how your mind parses it. And I thought, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting way to start to reverse engineer and look at how you really spend your time waking and sleeping. And I use this as the basis of both researching sleep and then making work. And I've had this kind of fascination that sleep holds secrets, right? You go to sleep at night, maybe you remember your dreams, but it's this big chunk of time that you don't really, you know, have an ability to account for. So as I started researching sleep and making work, you know, I realized all the good stuff happens when you sleep. Right? If you're a kid, I mean, when you're a child, you grow while you're sleeping. If you're sick, that's when you heal, that's when you get better. You know, if you're trying to lose weight, this is Mark Pine, you lose weight while you're sleeping. So if you sleep better, if you're on a diet, you're going to lose more weight. You reorganize long-term memory. It's sort of the, the chance where your brain has to resort things out. You know, all the good stuff happens as you sleep. So I, you know, took a lot of these ideas and I started, you know, putting it into, um, you know, found wood objects and made pieces that were based on sleep. And I installed, you know, a large piece in the gallery and all of this went into a show in Los Angeles. And I thought about this as um, experimenting. You know, it was a way to experiment with this idea of the patterns of waking and sleeping, how does that time parse out, you know, is it recognizable, does it feel familiar, and, you know, I started playing with this idea that artists can actually anticipate science. There's this really great book, um, uh, Proust was a neuroscientist, you might have read it, it's a couple years, uh, Jonah Lehrer wrote it, but he makes this case and he goes back and, and, and evaluates a whole number of artists, writers, where they took ideas and they believed in them as an artist, and mostly they paid attention to themselves. And very often, you know, in decades later, a lot of their ideas were in fact proven in science. So I thought, all right, why not? Um, and so I thought, well, if I have these ideas, let me just um, research it a little more. Let's go at it a little deeper. Let's, you know, really, you know, take a more intense look. And uh, it turns out there's a number of other artists that are self-trackers, that use data, that use their personal data and make work. Uh, Nicholas Felton in New York um, keeps track of everything he does that year and puts it in an annual report, the Feltron report. <laughs> the, he's um, like the best data visualization guy in the world. Facebook just hired him this last summer. Stay tuned. Mimi Chun, uh, you know, was tracking everything she ate during the week, and she matched it to Pantone colors. Isn't that cool? Uh, and so uh, you're looking across the top, and so each square is a portion of food. And what she figured out was more complementary colors, reds and greens. She was eating healthier. Food is Pantone color. You're never going to think about Pantone colors differently. And Danica Phelps, the red and green, she kept track of um, inflow and outflow when she was making money or spending money. So there's a number of artists, you know, that I realize there's a whole category that are using self-tracking in their, in their practice. And so after the show in L.A., which um, it was a little, I was stunned, really. It got a big fat review in the Los Angeles Times, and it got picked up at New Scientist and got reviewed by a number of tech sites online. And it was, um, it was kind of life-changing. And so at that point, it was like, oh my god, what am I going to do? And I, um, and I realized that I found all of the tracking that I was doing. I kept measuring my sleep, and I kept measuring my, you know, I, I'll show you in a minute. Um, I kept measuring my steps, and I realized I kept measuring a number of things, and I found it really quite reassuring. And so I decided that I was just going to track more. <laughs> Double down. <laughs> and so I've been measuring my sleep. I've measured my sleep for um, 20, 21 months, nightly. 
And so I get a sleep score every morning. I get to see how I slept the night before. It's now, and Mark will ask me, how'd you sleep? And I can, I got a 70. <laughs> and I've been measuring my weight um, for years and years and years. Uh, but I got a Wi-Fi scale. You can actually step on the scale, it will tweet. It's cruel. <laughs> Heart rate variability is, um, I was really fascinated as I read more. You'll start to notice, I mean, some of these things you'll go, I remember, Lori talked about that. That was like two years ago. Heart rate variability, it's not just your pulse, right? So you might have a pulse of 60 or a resting heart rate of 70, right? But it's the variability between the pulses. And what you want is more variability is a sign of health. And as you get more stressed, your heart rate gets more rigid. So Dawn, it's like a drumbeat. You want it to have some humanity to it, right? It's that slight variation in it. You can tell the difference if you've got a drum machine, you, right? You want it to have just that little bit of change. So heart rate variability is a really good indicator of stress. And so you're going to see polar monitors. There's a whole bunch of little watch devices that are all coming out that have heart rate variability as part of their testing. Anyway, so I, um, I got a Fitbit. This was seven or eight months ago, and I track how many steps I took. This is like the greatest thing ever. So it's, a, it's an accelerometer, and it tells me that I walked 11,452 steps today. Well, you set 10,000 as a goal, but you'd be surprised. Sometimes I don't even leave like my studio, and you can get four or 5,000 steps in, just if you stand up and move around. But just the act of measuring is really powerful. It's funny because Mark has one of these and he'll forget to have it on for a couple hours in the morning and goes, oh my god, I've been walking for free. <laughs> <laughs> um, I measured my DNA. You can get your, they have specials, $59. Um, you can get your 23 and me and get your DNA tested, right? You can see what you're at risk for. You can, you know, it's not $10,000, it's $59, 23 and me. Um, I measure everything on a computer. Uh, manic time, it in, runs in the background, it's free. Uh, you can start to see that you really spend you know, a couple seconds on an email, then you click and you spend a few seconds on Facebook and then you click again and click. Nothing's more than like 10, 12, 15 seconds. It's like click, click, click. And you start to realize it's probably the way your mind is you know, partitioned. Uh, you can measure your mouse movement. This one's particularly beautiful. We put it on the women in their work site. You just turn it on and it keeps track of everything as you click and move your mouse. So this is, you know, I just probably left it on for three or four hours. You can measure your mood every day based in color. Mujam.com. It's a site that you can go in and um, it's free. And it's, an, it's a very good way to indicate mood, just by color. You can add a, 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 like a label to it. And uh, I was giving a talk at the Quantified Self just a few months ago, and I was sitting there at breakfast after I'd started working on the laminate piece. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I have this site I really, really love. And I'm making these laminate color pieces based on moodjam.com. And the guy who's sitting next to me at breakfast just goes like this. Yeah. That's my site. I met the guy who made it. And if you actually go to moodgem.com and you go into the about, he goes, I was sitting at breakfast and there was this woman. There was, so we both have talked about each other. Um, so I'm, I'm giving him a really a 